Okay. So, hi, Brooke Eden. Hi, Caroline. How are you? So good. How are you? Amazing. Good. So, we're wrapping up CRS week, mm-hmm. which is Country Radio Seminar, for those yes. who don't know. What has it been like? It's been a lot of interviews. Okay. Which are fun for the first two interviews and then you're like please stop making me talk about myself okay but I want you to talk all about yourself but we know each other so it's different okay right you know yeah um but it's been really fun because I really love radio they're great they're really fun they are great personalities they're characters and they're fun to talk to because they're absolutely ridiculous and I can relate to that (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you would say you're absolutely ridiculous. I would say that, yeah. What are the most ridiculous things about your personality? Um, probably my my most ridiculous thing is how bad I am at being on time. Oh, you're late. Oh, always. Really? Always late. Like how late? Um, like my team has already started giving me uh, times 30 minutes before where I'm actually supposed to be. Oh, no. Yes. Okay, could you talk to me about that? Because I actually have a really close friend who is 100% late, 20 minutes at least everywhere she goes. But I don't understand because I'm five minutes early usually. Oh. So what is the process? And by the way, we have a dog with us, <laughs> Lou, who is making a guest appearance on this show. Isn't she beautiful? She's beautiful. She wants to be interviewed. Hopefully she'll <laughs> give us a little singing serenade later. Who let the dogs out? Who let the dogs out? (laughs) Lou did. Lou let the dogs out. Lou, 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 Lou. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so Um, what is the problem? How do you, how are you late? I think it's a familial, uh, it comes from the family. Oh, it's in your roots. It's in my blood. So if I were to show up on Christmas Day, like my grandmother would say, come over at three. Okay. And if I would get there at three, she'd be like, what are you doing here? And really? I'd be like, I'm here for dinner. And she'd be like, nobody's getting here till 4.30. Why are you here? I'm like, because you late? told me three. Yes. Like an hour and a half late? Yeah. It's like almost rude to be somewhere on time because like nobody's going to be ready. What and are your roots? just like really rude. Um, Florida. Okay. Um, maybe it's like coconut time or something. <laughs> you know, like we're almost in the island. So I think that maybe like we think we also live on coconut time. <laughs> ridiculous right I love it I mean yeah. if we tried to be like best friends joined at the hip all the time it, it'd I would be really hard I would go crazy you we'd hate it we wouldn't hate each other but I would have to like come pick you up yeah and you would and then you would have to come in my house and be like Brooke you be wet one. hair outfit number one go so like by the time you're supposed to be somewhere you still have wet hair the hair isn't the bad thing. Like, it only takes, like, 10 minutes for the hair to dry. Okay. We're good with the hair. It's more just it, my outfits are the thing that takes me forever. So you go through, forever. like, a style show? Yeah. Fashion show all day, every day. Yeah. So before you go out, how many outfits do you try on? Um, before I go, okay, when I go out, it's not that bad. It's mostly when I'm performing. Okay. Like, if I have a show that night, I go through, like, six outfits. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's difficult. But you always look great. Thanks. What would you consider your style? Because you have a definite style. You're freaking hot, by the way. Thanks, sister. A blonde, a bombshell with some purple. And what other colors do you have in here? It's like a reddish thing. Got some red and some purple brown, in the hair. Some blonde, you know. How would you call your style? Rock and bod. Look Thanks, awesome sister. in midriffs. Thanks. Um, I guess it's kind of like country, rock, lots of fringe. Love fringe. Love fringe. I mean... If I don't have friend John, there's like, I'm not having a good day, you know? <laughs> it's like, are you okay? Are you bad day. Okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like some people have a bad hair day. I'm like, no, I don't have friend John. Like, this is a, a problem. Um, yeah, I guess it's probably like country, rock, edge. I like edge. Okay. I don't just like pretty outfits. I like there to be like some leather or some yeah. black involved. Who are your style icons? Mm-hmm. Olivia Newton-John, no. I love her. From Greece? Yeah. She's the best. Totally. She just wears a lot of leather. I think you could do the Shania, though. The oh mid leather. Oh, my God. I leather, love spandex. Shania. I love Shania. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, I remember, like, the yellow, like, jumpsuit outfit. Yeah. Do you remember you that? You should do jumpsuits, body suits. You oh have the gosh. body to do that. I love jumpsuits. Full body jumpsuits. I mean, should we, like, no get on No one's doing this? that right now. Should we make this happen? Yes. Okay. Let's you should it. get custom-made jumpsuits. Seriously. I wore a romper on Monday. I had a, um, a show 
called with Indie Indie Palooza. It was um, Broken Bow, like BBR group, um, Curb, and Black River. Yeah, and they called it Indie Palooza, and they had a bunch of artists come and perform. And that night, I wore this like really fun. It looks like a romper, then then it has like a kimono attached to the back of it, like a cape. Love. And that was so fun. And then my mom also just um, found this other romper that's a lot like that. Um, that it's, it's too big. I have to like get it taken in. <laughs> so it I can't wear it yet, okay. but I'm going to have another one of those. So maybe this is like the new thing for me. We're sitting in the management office. It's just saying, uh, full body jumpsuits for Brooke, like spandex head to toe Shania days, bringing it back. You can do that. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. We'll work on it. I want to start off with a little bit of some games. Tell okay. me the first thing that comes to your mind when I say these words. Okay. Sugar. Hi. <laughs> Sexy. Um, that's a hard one. Victoria's Secret. <laughs> Pizza. Yummy. Chocolate. Valentine's Day. Nashville. Love. L- right? Yeah. Love it. Love. Phone. Essential. <laughs> Boys. Not now. <laughs> Music. Now. Tattoos? Not now. <laughs> Blonde. Blonde? Blonde. Legally. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then would you rather go streaking down Music Row or eat a live snail? Live snail. Really? Oh my God, a thousand percent. You wouldn't go streaking. What do you say? It's like almost escargot. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I have dreams that I'm streaking down Music Row. Like those terrible nightmares. I'm yeah. like always naked and I'm like... <laughs> in some kind of boardroom and I'm just sitting there and everybody's staring at me like why the are you naked (laughs) that's like my like terrible reoccurring nightmare really yeah so eating a live snail is like so over I mean I hope I don't get tapeworms but (laughs) ain't nothing wrong with a tapeworm (laughs) ain't nothing wrong apparently makes you skinny yeah ask the Warren Brothers they know oh my gosh okay would you rather never be able to take a shower again for the rest of your whole life okay or only be able to eat broccoli for the rest of your whole life broccoli You could eat broccoli for the rest of your whole life? (laughs) There'd be some gas issues, but... (laughs) (laughs) Could you not take a shower for the rest of your life? I could not just eat broccoli for the rest. I don't mind being dirty. Can I go in the pool? Sure. I could go in the pool and I could go on the beach and I could go in a lake, but I couldn't take a shower. Yeah. You can't use soap products. Okay, I could probably do that because I feel like I could be like natural, (laughs) but... Yeah, and then with the gas issue, also I love Mexican food too much. Yeah. (laughs) If I could do pools, beaches, and lakes, I would probably um, never take a shower again. Okay. That's a tough one, though. It is a tough one. They're also super, like, non-related. So, like, where did you even come up with that? My head. (laughs) My head. Uh Uh-huh. Don't even want to... the ridiculousness in your head. Don't even try to get in this head. (laughs) So, I want to talk about your career. I read that you got started because your dad is a musician. Yeah, my dad's a drummer in a country band in you're from Florida I'm from yeah exactly and um I was four when I started singing just like around the house yeah and at five my dad was like do you want to come and like play with our band on the weekends and I was like yes at four at five five years old yeah I was singing any man of mine no you were not I was too (laughs) and I had like um sequin chaps and rhinestone cowboy boots and a rhinestone cowgirl hat. I mean, okay. mom like hooked up the, the attire. <laughs> so you've always been fashion forward. Oh my gosh. Okay. So let me explain that to you. So my mom did windows her whole mean? life, like displays for stores. Oh, fun. Yes. So That's creative. Yeah. It's super creative. Both of my parents are so creative. But when I was younger and still to this day, like if we're in, if I'm in town, I am like her walking mannequin. So she dresses you? So she dresses me a lot. And your mom is ageless, by the way. Y'all look like twins. Ageless. I mean, That's literally, incredible. I can't take her around any boy that I ever like because they're just like, all of a sudden, like, your mom's really hot, though. And I'm like, you better be saying that because that's what I'm going to look like when I'm 50. Seriously. Guys, you know? look at that. They you know? do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, that's So fine. she dresses you. Well, I mean, like, not now. Like, <laughs> she lives in Florida and I live in Nashville, so. But, like, on Monday night, I had the show and I sat her up like on my dresser and I was like okay mom oh on your phone FaceTime okay 
face. I sat my mom on set my her dresser. Up on your dresser. I sat my mom's FaceTime call up on my dresser, and I was like, "Mom, I need you to help me pick out an outfit because I'm going crazy." I got home from radio tour on. Well, I flew from radio tour to a wedding. Okay. With all of my sorority sisters, so you know Where'd how you go that to goes. I went to University of Florida. Okay. Yes. Was it wild? Um, it was wild. We, I was there during the national championships. Okay. So um, I was there for two of them. So uh, like the years of Tebow and all that stuff. Oh, he's so cute. He is so cute. Did you know him? Uh-huh. Did you ever kiss him? Um, no. You kissed him, Tebow? No, I didn't. <laughs> no, I didn't. I really didn't. You should. Uh, I know. He's so cute. He's really cute. I try to tell all my single girlfriends, that's the one you got to get with. I'm telling you, though, he is the hardest um, boy to, like, get to, like, to, like, get him down. What's that called? To tie him down. Tie him down. Yeah. You know why? Why? Because he's, he literally, I think he, like, lives for God, which is a good thing. He straight up lives for God in football. God in football. Yeah. It's the an whole, amazing thing. I love that to death. Heard him speak, but like he really is truly that kind of guy. He really, he really is. I remember the first night I met him. Um, I knew nothing about football. I still don't know anything about football. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm a lot better now. Okay, but at the time I had no idea who our quarterback was, what a football team was. I had no idea. So I had just gotten to University of Florida, and my friend Allie's boyfriend lived with Tim. Oh, so you yeah. like had an inside to oh, Tim. Oh, well, yeah. She was like, oh, Tim, my friend Tim like really wants to meet you. You have to come oh, to this party. So I was like, okay, cool. So I meet him and uh, the first thing I said to him was, whoa, why are you so big? <laughs> and he like looked down at me and was like, whoa, why are you so small? And it was just like love at first sight. But then I agree. Yeah. Y'all be a beautiful couple. Well, I, I coerced him to go out that night because okay. he, like, we were at a house party and um, we were going out for his best friend's birthday and he was like, I really can't go out. I'm going to have football practice tomorrow. And right. I'm like, you're not drinking. Like, we're not having to drink. go out and drink. No. Wow. No. He's truly perfect. He's truly perfect. And uh, I was like, you're not drinking. And he was like, and I, he had like one of those Live Strong bracelets on. Okay. And I put my hand inside of his Live Strong bracelet. You so were joined. Like handcuffed together. Oh. And I was like, we're going downtown. I and love it, like, Brooke. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that was our love fest. And then um, I, he knew I was a singer and he asked me to sing for him all night. And I was like, Tim, throw me a football. Okay. <laughs> like It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Like, yeah. I'm not asking you to throw me a football. So like, don't ask me to sing all night. Did you sing for him though? I did. I sang Amazing Grace in the national anthem. <laughs> I mean, are those not the most like random songs ever? But he was Good like choices. Yeah, he was like, Will you sing Amazing Grace? I love it. I was like, okay. Okay, so I'm okay, still having hope for Tim. Maybe. Hey. I haven't I haven't seen him in years. Like years. Let's find him. Find him. Find Tim. Find Tim. Hashtag find Tim. <laughs> okay, so you started with your dad, then you went to American Idol. I did. And you were in the OG days. The like, OG. Like with uh, Paula and Simon, Simon and, and Randy. Randy. Oh, yeah. What was, was that there. like? Um, it was a really interesting experience. Okay. Um, it was really like the kick in the butt that I needed. Because you said something. What did you say? It helped you find the gift. You helped, helped you find the gift and know. The gift and know. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, I was 18 when I did it. And I went to Hollywood. I did the whole thing. And I actually met, like, Mickey Guyton out there. Oh, was she on American Idol? She was on American Idol as well. What? Yeah. And we met because she was the sweetest thing. And she Same still season? She the sweetest thing. Same season, yeah. Wow. And um, my hair was, like, out to here. And my mom's going, oh, honey. Like, trying to, like, fix my head. And uh, <laughs> Mickey came up out of nowhere and was like, here's a straightener. And I was like, how sweet are you? And she's like straightening my hair. And she's like, by the way, I'm Mickey. And Love so we've that. been friends since then. But anyways, um, we were out there and I met some incredible friends. And I also realized that there were so many people that were working so much harder than I was working. Really? Oh my gosh, yeah. And, um, and I just, it was really the kick in the butt that I needed to go, if you want this, you need to start working harder. Okay. And um, at the same time, 
I knew I wasn't ready, but my family did not know I wasn't ready. They just You're always like, ready in your family. Oh, totally. I mean, I should have been a superstar when I was four. Exactly. To my family. You yeah, know? I, I hear you. Yeah. And so um, they were devastated. And I just kind of was like, guys, I wasn't ready for it yet. And at the time... I was like a little upset that I didn't make it and you know I thought oh my dreams are crushed and all this stuff and here I am years down the road and I'm like thank god that it didn't happen at that you time. You aren't ready but you don't know you're not ready. You don't know in you're the moment. Ready. You're so right but I, I kind of did like I you had this gut feeling that I was like this is all okay. So what did you do what was it what did you do to get ready like after you said you you needed to work harder what did you yeah. what was your method? I started studying music a lot more like reading but look like, what does no, that mean? like just listening to other types of music. Okay. My whole life, all I did was listen to country music, okay. which is incredible. Mm -hmm. But it's like there's so many other types of music out there that can, you know, help to to shape and form your voice as a country singer. Mm -hmm. And so I I started studying like Etta James and like Adele and all these incredible soul voices. Because you are soulful. Oh, you thanks, are a girl. tiny little hand person that can like fit in your pocket, but your Probably voice is huge Thank with you so, so much. much soul. Is that just Thank what you. comes out of you naturally? Like I've always had a bigger, like I've always had a bigger voice. You know, people have always said, you you have such a little body and you have a bigger <laughs> voice that comes out of it. But, um, but it's the soul is just like something that I kind of probably have gotten in the last like maybe five years or something. So um, like you developed it. Yeah, like when I really started like listening and loving music. How did you develop soul? I don't know. It was just it I I think that I really needed music. Okay. Like about 5 years ago, right when I graduated from college, it was like, what do I do? Like how do I make this dream a reality? How do I do this? And I really did a lot of soul searching and just like trying to figure life out, you know. What did you come up with? Um you I had to put everything in music. You know, I had all. to just, I just had to give it up. I had to give it to the Lord and be like, all right, God, like you, uh, you got my back and I'm going to work really hard for this, you know? And whenever that happened, it just, every time I sang, it was like, like pieces of my life were just like coming out and like the world was coming in. I don't know. It was a really strange thing, but. Did you start writing at that time? I started writing when I moved to Nashville. And how did you decide to move to Nashville? I always knew I wanted to move to Nashville. The you question, knew it? Yeah. It was never a question of. If it, was it wasn't LA been. or New York, it was always Nashville. Always Nashville. How, why? Country music has always been what I wanted to do. Country. Yeah. I mean, when I was five years old, I'm from Loxahatchee, but in, in my part of Florida, you could easily go pop. Yeah. You could easily go country. It's just kind of like where you land. And for me, it was just always so obviously country. I mean, growing up in country line dancing bars and. Do you line dance? Yeah. <laughs> I do. It's so fun. What's your favorite one? Lulu. <laughs> Lulu wants to come make an appearance. Hey, Lu. Do you have anything hey, to say? Y'all should see this dog. She's, I mean, she looks like a real life teddy bear. She's literally beautiful. <laughs> what are your favorite line dances? Um, well, somebody made a line dance to daddy's money. Oh, what? should that be your music video? I mean, you know how Alan Jackson did totally. that long line dance? Good time? Yeah. Oh my gosh, right? What if you did a line Wait, dance to Daddy's Money? That would be so cool. Uh -huh. I mean, at least get people to like get it on YouTube, start learning yeah. it, taking it out to the bars. Do you know it? I don't know yet. You gotta learn it. It literally like, just came out. Speaking of Daddy's Money, that's your single. Yeah. You had a single before, American Dreamin'. Yeah. Which I love that song. I love both your songs. Thank you. American Dreamin' was on Sirius Radio. Yeah, so American Dreamin' was kind of like the catalyst to get me started. I didn't have a record deal then. Okay, how did so, you get on Sirius Radio then? Um, it was like a friend of a friend knew John Marks. Who was running Sirius. Who ran Sirius at the time. And um, we sent in American Dreamin', we sent in the song, and uh, he was like, I love this. Wow. I'm going to make you a highway find. Wow. Were you already with your producer, Mickey, at that yeah. time? Yeah, uh, Mickey Jack Cones, who's amazing. First time, not okay. The first, not the first, uh, not the first American Dreamin' that I went okay. into, but um, yeah, it was a really, it was like a really crazy thing because all of a sudden I was like, you just submitted, yeah, and all of a sudden I was being played over across America. How was that? It was incredible. It was insane. I was like, this can't be real. And then a couple of months after that, 
um, BPR Music Group. Which is Broken Bow yeah, Records. I'm with Red Bow Records. You signed with Rec- I, Red Bow. So did Red they Bow. find you based on the series? There was a lot of things that led up to it. What? Um, How did it happen? I did a, uh, I signed up for a contest to okay. sing Baby Girl with Sugarland. Nice. And I won the contest. Really? And, yeah. And um, I got to sing in front of like 20,000 people in my hometown at our huge amphitheater. So you signed up in your hometown? Well, I signed up on Facebook. Nice. And it was for, yeah, it was for my hometown. Were you living in Nashville yet? Or were I you? was going back and forth between okay. here and Nashville. So literally my life was Baby Girl. Like, I had just moved to Nashville. Dear mom and dad, please send money. Like, all that <laughs> stuff. And um, and so it was like a really, it was kind of like my, the mantra of my life at that point. Okay. You know? And so it was really crazy, the timing of it all. But um, I was supposed to sing a verse and a chorus. And Jennifer looked at me after the second, after the chorus and was like, girl, you get it. Jennifer you know? Nettles from Sugarland. From Sugarland, yeah. She's like, take it home, sister. Take it home, sister. So she like, let me sing the whole song. And of course, it all went up on YouTube and it kind of went a little bit viral up in, up in Nashville. And this was after American Idol. Oh, way after. Way American after. American Idol. Okay. Way after American okay. Idol. This was, you know, three, two and a half, three years ago. Okay. So Keithan from Magic Mustang, who is the publishing company connected to BBR Music Group, okay, um, he saw it on YouTube and was like, "We gotta get this girl in here." No way. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, and at the same time, American Dreamin' was going on serious. On serious. That's perfect timing. So it was just really good timing, and um, I got signed. I guess like maybe a cu- like a couple months after that. Were you freaking out? Totally freaking out. Could you believe your life at this point? No. It was just literal, like, dreams come true. Do you believe in magic? Totally believe in magic. That things can actually happen like that? Yeah. I totally believe in fate. I feel like, like, throughout your whole life, you're kind of like, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? What's going to happen? And it's like, you have so many unanswered questions until later on, and all of a sudden, those, like, that question that you had for the last 10 years of, like, why did this happen to me? Makes sense. Makes so much sense. What guides you? What guides me? Mm -hmm. Um, Prayer. I pray a lot. Just like, oh, what do I do? Do you have gut feelings? Oh, yeah. I have an insane intuition. Do you listen to it? Um, I've learned to listen to it. It's hard to learn to listen, isn't it? Yeah. Because a lot of times you're like, okay, I know what my gut's telling me, but, you know, something, it's like something gets in the way. And then all of a sudden you're like, wait, then you're questioning your gut. And so um, I've really started to to listen to that what's been one of the biggest decisions you've had to make where your gut's telling you one thing but your mind's saying another but you go with your gut Mm, that's really hard it Um, is right yeah it that's that's I don't know that happens to me actually a lot (laughs) and and it's hard to even like pick out one situation because I overthink everything yeah like I'm such an overthinker and like overanalyzer and like most of the time you're an artist like black and white yeah, exactly. And I'm like, all of a sudden, I'm like, but it could be pink and turquoise. <laughs> and I'm like, why, why am I doing that? It's black and white. And just pick some, you know. But I think as a that. creative person, I think that's the beauty, the gift and the downfall is you are able to see so much more because your mind is creative. So you can come up yeah. with a lot of ideas. Whereas totally. if you are a black and white person, you really can't see the other colors. That's so true. So it's like a blessing mm-hmm. and a curse. you got to learn how to like curse. decipher. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what they tell you, and they're like, you have a God-given ability. It's a blessing and a curse. You know? It always is. Yeah, totally is. Okay, so you got signed. Yeah. Which is amazing. Yeah. And now you're putting out Daddy's Money. Yeah. Which is your, I guess, your first official single. It's my first radio single, yeah. With Broken Bow. Mm-hmm. And tell me what that song's about. Okay, so uh, I grew up in like a really, really like middle-class, chill household. Mm-hmm. My dad's a drummer at night and a carpenter in the daytime and um what does he make he makes um cabinets he builds houses he builds bathrooms i mean he does it all everything really really good yeah he's really good but the song actually happened and like i'm a songwriter i love writing songs but my friends callie north and muddy magnolia yes they wrote this song love about my life I love it. And um, it came out because I was living um, in Nashville for two weeks, 
when I first moved here. I was living in Nashville for two weeks. I was writing, networking, and, you know, meeting people. And then I would fly home to Florida for two weeks. And I Why would, would you perform. go home? Well, I would do performances down there. Oh. And that was my job. Oh, okay. So instead of, you know, working a nine-to-five or a part-time or being a bartender or anything like that, I was like, I want my life to be music 100% all the time. How okay. do I do that? And so I would fly home. I would do shows down there, and then make enough would, money. And make enough money for the whole month in two weeks. Dang, and then girl! I would fly back up here, do the whole thing over again, and I did that for two years until so I got signed. Hustling. I was hustling, girl. I was hustling. And uh, one day, I remember um, Callie was taking me to the airport. And you lived with her. Yeah, we were roomies. Love. I love her. I love her too. She's so great. And of course, in her Callie way, was like, "Oh man, I hate when you have to leave." <laughs> It's so not fun being at the house by myself. <laughs> She's from Texas, and that was like a terrible impression of her. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, she she was like, why do you always have to go to Florida? And I looked at her and was like, girl, I got to go home and make that dough. And she was like, what? Like, you make money when you go down to Florida? And I was like, yeah, what do you think? I'm just going that, down there for the sunshine and the sand. <laughs> and she was like... Oh my God. She's like, I just didn't know that. She goes, please don't take this the wrong way. But I always just kind of thought that you came for money and your parents slipped some in your bank account at the end of every month. And they probably paid for you to fly home to Florida all the time. Oh, wow. You. And, and I just looked at her and said, girl, I never had daddy's money. I and, love that. Right. And then two days later, she sent me this song and said, we just wrote this song for, like about your life. And, um, and she was like, I, you have to hear it. And she sent me daddy's money and... Did you that love was my first single? Oh my gosh! Like I still remember exactly where I was. Where were you? I was at my mom's house in Florida, and I got a text, and it was sitting on the bathroom counter. My phone was sitting on the bathroom counter, and I remember listening to it in the bathroom because it was like, "Oh, there's really good acoustics in here." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you feel but like it just summed you up? Completely. It was really something like when. I was choosing a first single, you know, I've written so many songs and... And that's hard because you didn't write it, you're a songwriter, so to cut an outside song, it really must speak to you. It totally, it totally did, and it it really did, you know, sum up where I was in my life, and, you know, just coming from not a lot, but really hustling and working and and making my way, and having the support of my family, but not the monetary support of my family, and just figuring out how to do that, and um, so daddy's money was just such like a, you can do it, like it doesn't matter where you come from, it's about where you're going, and how you're going to get there, and you can do it, and so um, for me, that's where I am right now, and it's like, I have a lot of love songs, I have a lot of like, you know, Boy, boy teaching songs, not man hating songs, but boy teaching songs. What does that mean? Well, you know, like in Nashville, it's always like, oh, that was a man hating song. But oh. my songs are never man hating. Men are not the problem. Boys are the problem. Boys are the problem. Boys are the problem. Mm-hmm. So it's like if you like if you had a man hating song, it'd be like, I hate that you stole my heart, heart, and then you stomped on it. But <laughs> and started dating like, my best friend and started dating my best friend oh, yeah exactly <laughs> um but my songs are more like this is how you're gonna treat me you so know? you're letting them know how you'll be treated in your exactly. songs exactly so we had a song called sunday morning i was gonna ask you about sunday morning yeah tell me about so that i have this song called sunday, sunday morning and the basic the basis of this song is if i'm gonna be your saturday night i'm gonna be your sunday morning <gasps> I love that. And it, it was based on a true story. Was it? Yeah. What's the story? Um, well, one of my friends um, spent the night with this boy on a Saturday night. Oh, okay. And on a Sunday morning, I get a phone call at 6.45 a.m. Okay. Saying, oh my gosh, I spent the night at this guy's house last night, and I woke up, and he's not here. He, he left his left own house? his own house. That sucks. And it was really embarrassing. Yeah. And I was like, girl, send me your location. I'll come Got to come you get up. you immediately. Exactly. And um, so my friend gets in the car and she's like, I just like don't know what I did wrong. Like maybe I was like too nice or like, I don't know, maybe I wasn't nice enough. And she's like twirling her hair. And I'm like, no, you just made one bad decision. Like he's a jerk. Right. And like you couldn't have known that. But now you know that. So like don't do it again. But I basically was like, all I know is if you're going to be his Saturday night, you better be his Sunday morning. And that. And if you're not, you need to kick his ass to the curb. And right? move on. And move on. Mm-hmm. And um, and that inspired this song. 
And I love it. That's why I call it a boy teaching song and not a man hating song because a man wouldn't have done that. That's it's true. Boys that are the problem. And there's a lot of boys in Nashville. There are a lot of boys. Why? Um, well, there's a lot of creative types here. I, yes, that's true. You know, and those creative types sometimes get a little in their head about how awesome they are. Are you attracted to the creative types? I'm, I'm attracted to the creative types, but I'm not attracted to the egotistical types. I hear you. Yeah. Like, you know, some, some people are like, every girl loves a bad boy. And I'm like, that is just so not me. Yeah. Like, I like the sweet boys who are like, I'm going to treat you right. And like, I'm going to treat you like a princess. And like, I'm really into like healthy relationships. I love that, Brooke. But it's hard because sometimes you think he's a good boy and then he turns into a bad boy or you find out he's a bad boy. You know what I mean? Have you had some experiences dating? I have, yes. I have. Yeah? Mm-hmm. That's artists, man, I'm telling you. So you only date artists? No. Musicians? Oh my God, no. That's well, what's your type? at all. What's my type? Mm-hmm. I like pretty boys. You do? I do. <gasps> but like, I like a little bit of grit. Okay. Like, I don't like baby faces or like too, like, I like, I like a little bit of like grizzle. Give me a celebrity. Name one. A celebrity? Yeah, like a perfect looking celebrity to um, you. Um, Hemsworth. Oh, which like one? Either one of them. <laughs> <laughs> like just the last name Hemsworth would be great with mine. Right? I wouldn't even have to like change any kind of like um, uh, initials because I'm Brooke Eden Helvey. My last name is Helvey. Oh. Yeah. Hemsworth. So I, I like Brooke that. Brooke Eden Hemsworth. They are, and they're Australian? Uh, yes. Love. Good choice. So I'm sorry, but yeah. Okay. That's like the perfect cuz he's looking like, person. Yes, he's like really handsome and he's got the grizzle and he's yeah. got the muscles and yeah. Yeah. And he's clearly the one's clearly a bad boy cuz he's sitting Miley Cyrus. Oh They're my back gosh. engaged. Can you believe? He must like I mean, it a, a little while. Can you believe? They don't match looking wise anymore because she no. really is so like wild looking out there. Yeah, but that means I mean, he's a, he's got a streak, you know. I know. So he is I perfect. Mean, here's the thing: is like they fell in love before mm-hmm. Miley went a little cray cray. <laughs> but I feel like I feel like she's maybe not as cray cray as we think she I is. I think she's just expressing herself. I think she is too. Like I'm I'm a huge Miley fan. I think oh, she's awesome. I'm and her such voice a fan. Is ridiculous. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. And so, yeah, she just does her thing, but... And she wears I mean, thongs on stage. Yeah. Could you imagine, like, walking out with a thong on? I just don't. I have I cellulite. Mean, oh, my gosh. You don't. I told, oh, girl, I definitely Doubt have cellulite. It. You weigh, like, maybe 100 Promise. pounds soaking wet. That doesn't mean you don't have cellulite. <laughs> well, let me tell you. But, no, it's, like, one of those things where, um, like, you were talking about streaking, like, down Music Row. Like, that's how I would feel with a thong on on stage. Oh, kill me now. I mean, I have, like, confidence on stage, but not that kind of confidence. I ain't trying to show my butt cheeks. Mm-mm. When Beyonce did the Super Bowl and her, like, butt was kind of showing, yeah. I couldn't believe it. It's so good looking. Oh, my gosh. It's Beyonce. Are you kidding me? I know. I mean, Beyonce booty. Ugh. Duh. It's to die for. Duh. Okay. So, oh, one side note about Jessie from Muddy Magnolia. She's yeah. with John Legend. Yes. Which is amazing. background singer. How cool is that? And That's oh who gosh. wrote your single to... I'm circling back around. Yes. Muddy Magnolias, Jesse, the lead singer of it, right? Are they both uh, lead singers? They're both lead singers. Yeah. yeah. They both like, you know, they both have their own like place, yes. which is amazing. They're so badass. their voices together are just insane. She's singing with John Legend. Chrissy yes. Teigen's my celebrity crush. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. I have a friend who looks just like her. <sighs> I know. Love. I know. One of my sweet sisters. That's cool. But There's so many cool people in Nashville. There are, aren't cool there? Cool stories. I mean, I, I feel like my whole life, I love Florida and I love where I'm from. But when I came here, I really feel like I found my people. So you have a great group. I have an incredible group. Who is in your group? Who's there's in your posse? So, there's so many different people that are in my posse. I mean, a lot of them are songwriters that like I just started writing with. And when you have like such an intimate relationship, you're like writing your life story. Yeah. You get really close to those people mm-hmm. and then they become, you know, really good friends. Because they know everything. Because they know, they know everything. Truly. Exactly. exactly. Um, one of my really good friends, Sarah, moved from Florida and okay. lives with me. And she's one of my best friends. Oh. Yeah. And um, actually like... I think the number is 30 now of people from my hometown that have moved really? to Nashville. Are they all musicians? No. And that's the thing. It's Why like, do they all come here? Because we love country music. Okay. And it's like, it's a very like small 
part of where I'm from that is like really obsessed with country music and people are so in love with it that like being in Florida is too way is too far away from being in Nashville. You have to breathe the you country have to air. Breathe the country air. Exactly. So they move up to Nashville and set their hands on it. Yeah. So I have people from home um, that are now up here and just a lot of a lot of artists that I've been become really close with and who are some of the artists people. that you're friends with Brett Young who I'm so excited he's, for now he's cute oh my gosh he's a pretty boy with oh an my edge gosh. I know could y'all date no, 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 no. he is so handsome and so tall yeah. he's so tall y'all could be the new he's Blake so and tall. Miranda oh my gosh I don't want to be Blake and Miranda because they got a divorce before they got divorced you could be okay. Faith and Tim okay I like you that you could be the new Faith and Tim yes what about Brett Oh my gosh, this is like, you're totally putting me on the side right <laughs> Well, now. he's good looking. Here's the thing. So I'm on radio tour right now. Uh-huh. I get off on radio, I get off radio tour and he goes on radio tour. So that'll be a really great, I've, listen, I've done the, I've done the dating the artist thing before and it's really, really hard. It can work though. It can work. It's just like, especially in the beginning of a career mm-hmm. and the beginning of a relationship. I mean, the thing is with me and Brett is that we've literally been friends for so long like four years now or something okay. like that so it wouldn't be like oh let's get to know each other like we already know each other really well but we're both on the road all the time so okay yeah tim tebow or brett i'm fine with either one <laughs> they both are good looking yeah so you exactly. said your biggest inspiration when well, i read this i don't know if you still feel this way yeah is jason aldean um i love jason he's amazing he's so amazing and it's crazy that i ended up on the same label group i was gonna ask him. you that yeah so you are magical you drew it to yourself <laughs> It's so crazy, right? It's like, I remember I came, I came to town and, um, I said, I want to be like some kind of mixture between Jason Aldean and Adele. I love that. Which is like, how do you do that? Okay. But, um, I think that we found this really cool balance, um, in that, but he, he was always such a, a huge, I love the rock that he brings to country. Yes. And I love that he just rocks it out. And, but it's country. Um, it's totally country. It's to- he's totally country, country lyrics with rock sound, kind yeah, of. Yeah, rock guitars and, mm-hmm. and, you know, the whole rock show. But um, I remember the first night, uh, it was not the first night, but like one of the, like, so one of the first nights that I was in Nashville, I went to the Hard Rock to see my friend Jamie Floyd play a I show. I love her. Do you know Jamie? Yes. You do? She's okay. awesome. We grew up in the same neighborhood. And you grew up with Cassidy Pope also. Yes. Yeah. And y'all took voice lessons together. Yes. Went to high, we school, went to high school, together. school together. We were in chorus together. Can you believe y'all are both making it together? I mean, it, it is the craziest thing. Like whatever's in our water, if you want to be an artist, you might want to drink it. <laughs> because <laughs> everybody, I mean, our friend Ali Tamposi that we did um, voice lessons with and grew up with now lives in LA she wrote what doesn't kill you makes you stronger for Kelly Clarkson no yes it's the best yeah and Jamie Floyd she grew up on our block her younger sister Kelly Floyd um was my best friend and Cass's best friend growing up and so you know it's just literally drink the water drink it drink it okay but yeah so we were at the hard rock and um after Jamie played, this guy, Danny Myrick, played. I love Danny. And Danny wrote, she's country for Jason Aldean. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, oh my gosh, that is what I want my music to sound like. I want my music to sound like a female Jason Aldean. And, um, do you feel like you've accomplished that? I do. Have I you do. made your record? Um, are you making we it? We are recording at the end of March. Do you have the songs picked out? We have 19 songs. Okay. Yeah. Are you going to record them all? I think so. I mean, why not? We had a hundred songs to choose from. What? We like dwindled it down to thirty at one point. <laughs> what? How do you pick from a hundred? Um, well, of course you have your favorites. You mm-hmm. know, I mean, do you have an absolute like, favorite? I have a couple of absolute favorites. What are they called? Um, there's this song called "Silent Speaks." That's a powerful title. Yeah, um, I wrote it about my ex boyfriend. Okay. Um, okay, so. I have actually two, I can like put two stories in one here. Okay, let's hear it. So another one of my favorite songs is called If I Would Have Known. Okay. And I'll start with that one. So okay. If I Would Have Known, I wrote um, when my boyfriend at the time called me and said that we should go on a break. Okay. And I said, okay, what's up? And he's like, he was, he's a musician too. And he was like, well, I'm going to be out on the road for a whole month. I thought I was only going to be out here for two weeks. And it's just not fair for you to have to wait for me. Oh, I hate that talk. Yeah. It's, it's not you, it's me. 
Yeah, exactly. Bullshit. And I was like, I mean, I'm cool. Like, I, I, I will wait for you, you know? <laughs> well, yeah. I will wait for you. Like, I'm supportive. I get this whole, like, musician thing. Yeah, you, you get know? it. Like, uh, I get it. And um, he was like, oh, no, no, no. And I was like, okay, so we're, like, breaking up then, right? Like, let's just call this what it is. No, 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 honey. We're not breaking up. Please don't say that. I love you so much. It scares me how much I love you. The love. The L-bomb. Oh. What's happening? L-bomb. Oh, yeah. We said I love you. Okay. We said I love you and all that stuff. And, um, and... I said, okay, like, I support you. Like, if you want to go on a break. And he was like, I mean, I'll be back in a month. We'll be able to, you know. Pick back up. Pick back up where we left off. And I still want to talk to you every day. Like, you can't okay. do that, go on a break and talk every day. Yeah, I know. Right. It's really okay. weird. So, nine days later, he had a new girlfriend all over social media. Okay. So, that was really cute of him. That's always just fun. And that's what I'm saying. He is not a man. Like, he is a boy. Well, he should have just been honest, maybe. He should have just been honest. If he was a man and said, listen, I met somebody else. I'm needing to break up with you because I met somebody. And the thing is, is the girl and him are so much better than we were because he really needed somebody who was going to be there for him at all times. Yeah. And she's able to do that because she's not also an artist and not also like on the, I mean, she is in the industry, but yeah. she has more time for him, you know, and he needed that. And so it was so a better, better match. Together. It's a better match. But, and I would have understood it if he would have just been a man about it. You know, I think that is such a good point. It's so hard for people to be honest sometimes. It really is. But it really, really is. it's better in the long run if you just like say it like it is. Exactly. It hurts for a second, but then. It hurts. It hurts harder at first. And then you're like, I'm so happy that you are honest with me. Mm-hmm. You know? Because then you don't have all these questions and you're not like, I know. Exactly. Like, okay, so that song's wrong? about that. Yeah. And what was that one called? It's called If I Would Have Known. And what is the point of that song? Um, basically I found out that uh, I thought I knew him. Like okay. I thought I really knew him. Okay. And, um, and I mean, I like really fought for us at times. Like we were friends for a long time before we ever dated. And like, I really fought for us to like be together. Okay. And, um, and I also found out that he was like already talking to this girl while we were together. Oh, and so, um, I almost felt like I was like the other woman in my own relationship. Have you written that? What? The other woman in my own relationship? And no, but that's part of if I would have known. That's a great angle. Well, thanks. I love that. Thanks. Okay. I mean, when you realize that, like, your boyfriend's cheating on you with somebody else, it's like, but you're in a relationship with him. It's like, what are you doing? Break up with me. You know? Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go all dominion on, on him and be like, yo, I know you ain't in love with me. Break up with me. You know? <laughs> but, um... So anyway, so that was that song. And then Silent Speaks stemmed from my mom because when um, we broke up, she texted him. She did. She texted him. Oh, mom got in there. Oh, she got in there and yeah. was not very happy with mom getting in there. It was so mom like, loves her baby. Chickadee. She loves her baby. Okay. Yeah. She's going to let everybody know what's up. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so like line is here. She is a mile away from it. <laughs> like cross the line. So I called her and was like, mom, you cannot do this to me. Like, this is not okay. Mm -hmm. You know? And she was like, well, honey, you just need to speak your mind more. You need to let him know that that was not okay. And like, you need to be a little bit more of a crazy (laughs) ex-girlfriend. And I'm like, mom, in the end, like I dodged a bullet and like, I am doing what I I am. I'm saying everything that I need to say by not saying anything at all. Okay. And you're, you're taking the high road. Yeah, and I was like, you know, it's sometimes silence speaks louder than words. And um, like, so, song. yeah, we wrote this song called Silence Speaks about that. So did you write a lot of your album? Um, yeah, most of it. Love it. Yeah. Okay, how would you call the vibe? Like, what's the tone? Is it Adele meets Jason? Aldine? It is, yeah. It totally is. Like, if you hear, if I would have known, it's, it's, very, it's very Adele. It's it's got like a really cool, like dramatic feel to it. I can't wait to hear. It's so fun. Um, but I would say like musically, the sound is like country, rock, soul. I love it. Which is really fun to get to do. And you are part of the woman empowerment thing that's happening right now. Totally, yeah. And I kind of feel like Leslie Fram, who runs CMT, mm-hmm. has spearheaded that. Totally. And started this, like, let's bring women back into country music. Because for a while, it was just Carrie and Miranda. And really, I mean, that's it. A yeah, solo and females. And right. Taylor. And then she went pop. Exactly. So then, like, Ban Perry was there, and Lady A had Hillary. But mm-hmm. there was 
like two solo females. Exactly. So this movement's happening with women and you're in it. It's so cool. And I, I'm, it's so surreal to think that I am in that, in that club. But I mean, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, it, you knew it had to circle around because being a baby of the nineties, you grew up with so many incredible females to look up to that were so empowering and just incredible. And I can't believe that we went that long without having more I know. female voices. But I mean, seriously, thank God for Leslie Fram because she's really brought it to a, a head and gone, guys, people want to hear more Women. females on on the radio. Mm-hmm. Let's give the people what they want. So what is happening? How is this movement taking place? I think that, um, you know, there's kind of like that power of no that we were talking about Mm -hmm. where this wasn't necessarily the power of no, but the power in a negative sometimes. And I think that the whole tomato gate thing that happened. Oh, because someone, what powerful who was it that said that? I would rather just not ever speak of his name. So some powerful I don't even know what his name is, but it doesn't matter. Some radio guy said that women were the tomatoes on the salad. Mm -hmm. Like the lettuce is the Luke Bryans and the Jason Aldeans and the women are the tomatoes. The tomatoes. And that's my favorite part of of the salad is a tomato. Obviously. And they add the color. Yes. Yes. They're so much more vibrant. Yes. Um, But it was very much like, you know, people were like, oh my God, I can't believe he said that. But I think that, you know, radio audiences a lot are just, they just take in what they're given Mm -hmm. and they don't think a lot about, oh, we don't have girls on the radio. It's like, they don't even know that they miss it until they are, until it's like brought into their radar that, oh my gosh, we're missing this voice on the, on the radio. Yeah. And so when that was brought to a head, it was kind of like people went, oh yeah, there's, we are missing women. We are missing women on the radio, <laughs> yeah. on country radio. That's really crazy. And then people started asking for that. And I think that that was such a blessing in disguise for females. And then Leslie kind of took that by the horns and was She's like... She's championed it. Oh my gosh. She has been every single female singer in this town's best friend. Mm-hmm. I mean, she has just completely, you know, taken us to a whole new level and said, I'm your girl mm-hmm. and we're going to make this happen. How and she amazing. Has. She's incredible. So who are your favorite females in country music? Um, like right now yeah. or like of all time? Uh, combo meal. Combo meal. Okay. Patsy Klein. Love. Shania Twain. Uh, duh. Body suits. Body suits. <laughs> Um, Leanne Rhymes. Love. Dixie Chicks. Mm-hmm. Um, Carrie Miranda, duh. duh. And right now I love Cam love. and Marin. Marin Morris. Yes. She's coming out with a bang. Yeah. She's awesome. Yes. She's mm-hmm. my church. Right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. She's she's got lots of really cool music and so does Cam. I loved Burning House. As love. soon as I like heard that song and she did it, her little uh, I was like, okay, girl. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Take me to church. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So those are my favorites right now. And you just put out a sex a calendar. Oh, girl. Tell me about it. So we. I want one. Girl, we'll get you hooked up with one of those things. My husband's be like, yeah, sister. Thanks for bringing that home, yeah, wifey. <laughs> <laughs> I love awesome. it. Brooke could come over. Yeah, right. <laughs> Um, we went on radio tour like right at the end of 2015 and the beginning of 2016. Mm -hmm. So we did a photo shoot for like three promo pictures and they took, I don't know, probably a thousand pictures. So we got all the stuff back and the label was like, we're making a calendar because love it. And it's like a legit calendar. It's awesome. It's not like, it's just like, Oh, one of those like small little real calendar, a real legit thing that you would like buy at like Barnes and Noble. I love it. (laughs) And you put little quotes in each month. Yeah. So we sat down and, uh, just kind of thought about what, that month reminded me of or what I had done that month or, you know, um, so what are some of the things you put? Um, what are one of the months? One of the months is, I think it's January and it was that I opened for Dustin Lynch three years ago at the South Florida fair, which is my hometown fair. That's a big deal. Yeah. And now he's my label mate. Girl. Yeah. So it's really cool. Um, and then also July is, um, I pray for our soldiers every day and for sparklers because I love it. Duh. Fourth of July. Duh. Sparklers all month long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Okay, so I'm going to wrap here in a second, but I like to, I want to ask you two questions. Okay. What is your vision board for the next five years? Ooh, oh my gosh, that's a big question. Oh, I know. Um, really, like my whole thing is like, I, I like to, I would like to say that I have these aspirations of like winning a Grammy or winning an ACM or winning a CMA or something like that. But like, what's the most important to me is that I just like get my music out there and my music becomes relatable to other people and like gets other people through times in their lives where they're like, oh my gosh, that's my life too. Yeah. And I can relate to that and I'm not alone in this. So, um, for me, my vision board is just working and hustling as hard as I've worked and, and even harder over these next five years to get my music out to the most people that we can and to just keep on living the dream. You know, it's like, you never know what's going to happen next, but just hustling every day and just having the best time. Like this is, I told my manager the other day, like, this is the happiest time in my life. It I've is? never been happier. Yeah. Cause it's you're like, living I'm, your dreams. It's, I'm actually getting to see it. It's like, are you, are you excited for the future? And I'm like, I'm excited to like, for right now, like this second right now is so exciting for me. And of course I'm excited for the future, but I'm just loving this ride. I love that. So I like to end with leave your light. So give me some inspiration. Ooh. Okay. Um, never give up on yourself. Believe in yourself, trust in your gut and listen to your mom. I love that. Yeah. Thank you, Brooke. Thank you, Karen. Everyone check out Daddy's Money. Mm -hmm. Okay, bye.